Good evening, everyone. I'm glad that Rusty told everybody to be loud and rowdy because I'm not used to prim and proper and well-behaved audiences. So don't disappoint me, please. I, uh, I want to thank Americans for Prosperity for having this event, uh, Tim Phillips, and just, you know, everybody who's here, every blogger, every radio host, everyone who's in new media, thank you so much for what you do. Really, thank you. Before I get going, I want to say very briefly that, you know, I, I really miss my friend Andrew Breitbart, but when I look around this room, and when I think of all of the conversations that I have had with people for the past couple of days here at Right Online, I think he would be very proud, and I think you are doing a damn good job of filling in. Thank you. Now last, last, last I guess it was the other night. I, I'm trying to remember when she was actually on. Well, last night, Michelle Malkin spoke. And I happened to catch her Fox News appearance when she was on with Juan Williams. She engaged in a battle of the wits with Juan Williams. And Juan, and forgive me, I know him personally, so I hope if he ever hears this, he won't think ill of me, but he came unarmed. He remarked that he was a real journalist. And he intimated that anyone who did not think of media in the terms that he thought of media. People who didn't approach news politics and reporting and broadcasting the way that he did, that somehow they were just a blogger. They weren't real journalists. They weren't real participants in media. And of course, the conservative reaction to this exploded across the internet just a blogger. And I did think, you know, I wonder what Andrew would have thought about this. WWBD, what would Breitbart do? And I think one of the very first things that he would have said, besides something I, you know, you'd probably get in trouble for saying on public airwaves, is you're not just bloggers. You're reporters. You are journalists. They don't own that term. If you pick up a phone and you call a source for a story, which I hope more people are doing, if you chase down a lead, if you break a story, you are a journalist. You are a reporter. The medium through which you distribute your information doesn't alter the definition of the skill you practice. The medium, whether it's time stamp entries in a blog format on a website, whether it's broadcast radio, broadcast television, dead tree media, whatever it is, that doesn't have any bearing on whether or not something is journalism. Journalism is something you do. It's something you practice. And I, I've thought about this for a long time. I've sta I started blogging in about 2000, 2001. Blogs and social media, and this is really important, they are the new penny presses. They very much are. You, everyone here, you are the media vanguard. And mainstream media is very envious of that. The purpose of the action defines what you do. Not Juan Williams, not MSNBC, not USA Today, or any of these other corporatist, biased, partisan hacks. None of them define what you do or who you are. You are a journalist if you're distributing truth and fact about current events, if you're talking about headlines, you're a journalist. Now, if you're just repurposing party talking points and falsehoods so as to persuade your listening, viewing, reading, whatever audience, you're a propagandist. And if you value opinion, if you're focusing more on opinion than fact in a particular story, you're an editorialist. For many years, the past several decades, the media has been trying to redefine what journalism is. They've have been trying to assert a patent on telling the story. 
And in my city in St. Louis, we have the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Piece of crap. It is a piece of crap. Sorry if any, I don't think anyone's here that writes for them. They don't go to conservative events. The late editor of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch was a gentleman named Cole Campbell. He's no longer with us. He was a great guy. He had very different views on journalism. He believed that citizens have the ability, that citizens have the right, and that they have the duty to tell the stories in their communities. This thing called public journalism. I was a freshman in college when public journalism was something that was being discussed. It was 1997, 1998. Public journalism, civic journalism was a hot topic. And the media establishment was absolutely horrified by Cole Campbell. They, they couldn't imagine that regular people what, could tell stories from their, that they might know better than these reporters. We can't, we can't let these unwashed masses tell the stories. Can't let these, we can't let these, these people go out and, and, and tell of the events and the news that are happening in their communities. They may fabricate documents related to the Air National Guard or maybe join an email distribution list and talk about influencing media narrative with their ideology called journalists. Oh wait, that wasn't, that wasn't us, that was them. Reporters, reporters are supposed to take a vow of poverty when it concerns opinion. And they, not many of them do. They're supposed to be rich in truth and poor in personal opinion. Who, seriously, who gets, you know, does anyone actually even read the paper anymore? I think the majority of our demographic actually gets their news from online. I know, what's the paper? It's the thing that we put down for puppies to potty train on, I don't know. But who, who picks up the newspaper and says, you know, I want to read what, what Jim Smith says here. What does he have to say? No one gives a crap what these reporters think. I don't pick up the news to read what some reporter thinks. I want to know when, where, why, what. I want to know the basic facts of the story. If I want to, if I want opinions, I'll go to, I'll turn to the op-ed page. I'll find an editorialist. You know, that's why network news, their ratings are tanking, by the way, because you know that when you turn on the television, you're getting op-ed. You're getting opinion editorial. At least we have the decency in new media. If someone's going to write an op-ed piece, they're going to, t you're going to know that it's an editorial piece. No one's trying to hide behind some veneer of dead objectivity, which is very hard to practice and about damn well doesn't exist anymore. It's like a quadricorn, not even a unicorn. It's like a quadricorn. Someone said something out there. <sighs> no, the media, when I, when I was watching that back and forth and that whole just a blogger conversation, I've noticed that the media not only wants to be active participants in the game of journalism, but they also want to be the referee, which is something, that's what our government does. It's something you can't do. And there's something that I realized a few years ago. It's not the technology so much that really scares legacy media. It's the fact that conservatives have mastered it that scares them. One of, one of my favorite things is whenever Barack Obama, President Obama, creates a hashtag. I love that so much. I wait, I can't, I, I wait, as, soon as, as soon as I see it, I just, I click on it, I open it in TweetDeck and I watch the fabulousness unfold because I know that they're gonna have their asses handed to them and this hat, I know that's what's gonna happen, it's beautiful. No, the media, legacy media has spent the last decade, probably even longer than that, demonizing new media. And they've tried to turn words like blog or blogger into pejoratives. But simultaneously while practicing the same techniques and skills themselves. They don't want you to do it, but they want to do it. You know, for an entity that despises the blogosphere so much, I've never seen anything like legacy media try to so hard get into the very thing that they despise and try to become the very thing that they despise. 
Who has broken, and I know this has been said before, who has broken the majority of the, the last, the, just the biggest stories in the past, what, 15 years? Yeah. Right. Rathergate, Acorn, Van Jones, New Black Panther Party, voter intimidation, NPR, Planned Parenthood, the mammograms, the climate change, the insider trading, Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren, who has vetted Barack Obama? We did, we have, and we are. Who fights back against the lies of the left, which manifest themselves daily in the form of headlines? We do. Legacy media is terrified of you for two reasons. When you hear the phrase, just a blogger or just a blog, remember this. That's what newspapers and networks tell you to protect their business model. Members of this audience in this room receive more page views than most corporatist mainstream media sites. And they beat most of those publications, not just in traffic, but in terms of turning out stories and breaking stories. You're competing against them for eyeballs, and legacy media has never had a competitor like you. They've monopolized the conversation for so long and have prevented and, and presented one side for so long. You come around, and they don't know how to deal with you, with us. They're also scared of you because your existence proves that they're no longer in control. See, and as I was telling you, the majority of our demographic, we get our news from the internet. The only people that I know, and if anyone does this, you know, God forgive me, the only, the, the only people that I know that, that go through their daily routine, they have their dinner, and then they, you know, they get their pajamas on, they sit down and they watch the 10 o'clock canoes are my grandparents. They're dead now, God rest their soul. They're the only people that I know who did that. They, it's, it's a new frontier in media. It's a, it's a new audience, new frontier, and fewer and fewer people have that daily routine. And, and even when corporate media gets on, Twitter or Facebook, they view it as a soundboard, not as what it should be, a conversation. Public journalism, Cole Campbell's view, has arrived. And it's, I think it's doing better than he ever thought. See, you're nimble. You're able to break stories. You're able to deconstruct narratives. You're able to do it so much quicker than they ever could. And yet you're just a blogger. So I wasn't going to include this part of my speech until about an hour ago. But I watched the press conference in the Rose Garden with Neil Monroe of the Daily Caller and President Obama. How many of you saw that? How many of you are aware of it? Yeah, of course you are. You're new media. Heaven forbid an unwashed mass member ask the president a question about his executive order on illegal immigration. The left was absolutely flabbergasted that someone interrupted him to ask a question. Can I make this point? Because I've, I've had this argument a little bit on Twitter. When you have a president who doesn't routinely take questions at these press conferences, when are you to ask a question? When is the press supposed to ask questions? They, were, they, they couldn't believe that, that, that Neil Monroe asked him a question, interrupted him and asked him a question in the Rose Garden. I say to all those people, all those progressives who are discussing this, I guess they forgot when Sam Donaldson went after Ronald Reagan in that very same Rose Garden. And if memory serves, and I know I'm not wrong, I think Sam Donaldson went after Ronald Reagan quite a bit, not just in the Rose Garden. It's amazing that we live in an era where simply asking a lawmaker a question is considered heckling. So we're going to have a discussion on manners. Let me get this straight. The president can bypass Congress on comprehensive amnesty reform, on, on, an, on an amnesty decision, but it's rude if a reporter asks him a question about it. Do I have that correct? Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 that's not the R word I was looking for. It's racist to ask him a question on it. So 
Was Sam Donaldson being racist to Ronald Reagan when he asked him those hard questions in the Rose Garden? Every journalist who condemned Neil Monroe, and I hope you all paid attention, every, air quotes, every journalist who condemned Neil Monroe but gave President Obama a pass has shown you where they stand on media's role. You don't bypass the will of the people and the voice of the people and you won't get questioned. It's quite simple. You don't like being questioned. You don't run for office. Very simple. If we are at a point, ladies and gentlemen, if we are at a point in our country where simply asking a question at a press conference is considered wrong, then I fear for the future of our country. Just a blogger. Was Benjamin Franklin just a blogger? Was Thomas Paine just a blogger? We don't exist, ladies and gentlemen, to print stories that are favorable to King George. We exist to tell the truth about the state of affairs. I don't care who's in power. You don't care who's in power. We exist to tell the truth. We exist to inform the public. We exist to share our opinions about the headlines. We exist as voices from the right, as voices in the wilderness. We exist to not be silent, but to be loud. And if that is rude, then God bless America. Let's be rude about it. We will not write less. We're not going to stop asking questions. We are the new Minutemen. We are the silence do goods. We are the new pamphleteers, the new media, and our motto is more voices, not less. Thank you, guys. God bless you.